So I had this plan to paint a ladybug like three different ways using different mediums. First, I'm going to do watercolor. <clears throat> I get asked a lot of times about the difference between watercolor and gouache. And um, so I think I want, it will be easier to show the difference. With watercolor, you want to use a round pointy brush. Um, and then, of course, your watercolor and water. I'm just going to make sure everything fits over here. Um, with watercolor, you want to paint light to dark. So I like to paint a few different layers. And I would go like that, paint, painting it. Really, my first layer is super light. I'm mixing a little bit of orange inside my red, so it is more red than pinkish. My paint palette is a little dirty, but you know. And I would paint super light, like first layer very light and then a little bit of water I don't really need puddles I just need it to flow evenly I can even dip in more water to make sure the paint flows again touching color wherever you put your the water it will flow I like to paint them in two different ones so not just coloring it in you know, painting it at one thing. Okay, so I'm going to go first layer like that. I'm going to let that dry. You can point your brush like this to make sure that your outside line is pretty. Come back with water and make sure you take any specific lines away. Okay. And then I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to skip ahead. Now, now nothing should touch that's wet. So if you paint with a little bit less water, then um, like this, it's kind of dry. If you lift it up, like you can still see where it's shiny or no. So not a puddle like this. If you feel you have too much water, on your on your um, painting you just like suck it up with your towel and then there will be less it dries pretty quick if you paint like this now I want to go into my black same idea you want to paint a round brush you Size do matter, however, if your tip is, is pointy enough, then you're fine. Okay, so I want to have a little bit less water. So lifting up so I can show. Oh, my phone should focus now. Um, you want to make sure that you can paint some of the dark area so it will flow like that. Flow like that. I kept that white spot specifically clean so and white. It looks a little awkward, I know. But I'm going to make sure that my lines are dark like so. And then cleaning my brush and I want to touch my towel once or twice, like making sure there's no extra drops. And I'm just going to blur the edges. More of like a roundish shape. If you have too much paint on your brush, you can just take your clean it again. Make sure you take the extra water and you can suck it up like that. So it kind of looks like a little highlight area. If you feel it washed away too much water, pushed it all the way to the sides. You can just come back with black paint and tap, tap, tap. 
feet in. And that could be my first, like his head section. I can also go ahead and paint his little antennas. Now what I like to do is I put my hand down and I only use the tip of my paintbrush and I paint away from my body so I can have a really easy line. Putting my hand down like this, make sure that you don't paint up in the air that causes some like thicker strokes. So you want to make sure that you have control. I'm adding all the little, I call them antennas, I don't really know what they are. And again, painting away. And like that. So now I do want to have where my pencil line, so I do want to have an, an extra line. So I'm just going to take a little bit of black paint and again, putting my hand down, dragging it across. And you can even come back with a second layer because it should be dry. And tap, 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 tap to make some of your black areas a little blacker. It happens when you paint with your, when there's a little too much water on your brush that you can push the paint away. And I can do the same thing, clean my brush, do my towel and soften the edges. Okay, so I like that. So now touching, even lifting it up, making sure my butt, my ladybug's body is dry. I want to come back and do a second layer of the orangey red color that I'm mixing. It totally depends on your orange and your red. <clears throat> so now, pointing my brush is where I get the really nice clean lines. I'm going to point my brush like that, making sure I go all the way to the end. But then, cleaning it, and then come back to blend it a little bit in. With water on my brush. I'm gonna come back and add red. So my first layer is gonna be the highlight. I do not wanna lose all of that. So even though I have a wet line right there, I'm going to make sure that I don't lose it. Over here, I want to have a white spot, so I'm just going to take my brush and suck up some of the paint. But before those lines can dry hard, I'm coming back with the paint and I paint over it. So I don't want any of these lines to dry. So I wanna have a few light spots and I wanna have a few dark spots and then I wanna have a lighter edge on this side showing the roundness of his um, body. Painting around. And making sure there's no hard edges. What if it looks like your paint is making a line like that? You can always go back with more paint because it's so a little wet. You can just add. So our first layer we did is going to stay or be the highlights. So this, and now I'm going to do exactly the same with this one and with that one that I did over there. I'm going to cover all the, smudge the edges so it's soft. I 
can come back and add more color while it's still wet. Make sure not to lose that line. And soften. These are the highlight spots. Soften. And soften. Okay, so this could be my second layer. Visiting the other side. And you will have to play with your paint. I like to mix a little bit of the red. I will show now why I'm doing that. And I'm going to go making sure that if they are touching over here, that they don't flow. Because wet and wet do flow. And sometimes it's easier if you turn your page. You can pull that line pointing your brush. And then soften that edge with only water. Don't make it too wet. And make sure you come back and blend in so there's no hard lines drying. You have to play around with what size brush you like best. Whatever feels comfortable. But look how much lighter it dries. Um, the paint dries when it's actually dry. So be mindful of that also. It dries sometimes different than what it looks like when it's wet. So my only little highlight spot is like over here. I'm gonna make sure that I blend, blend, blend. Water on my brush is a good blending tool. I clean a lot and I touch my towel. There's always that little drop that accumulates like right there. That's the one you don't want to drop on your paper. So lifting up so I can show you. This side is fairly dry. I can go back and add even a little bit more if I want to. I like how I can build up the different layers on my um, painting this way. Of course, you can paint it the, right, the first way with one layer. For me, I like to see the different um, layers building up. So I'm going to add some more paint like that. Because every time you add stuff, you just add something and it dry, dries differently. So I paint really rough like that and cleaning my brush, only water and I soften the edges, making sure that they blend. Dropping in water if I want them to move a little bit. Making sure I give more paint to this, so I don't just want to use water, it will wash it out a bit. And use cleaning, touching my edge. Again, using only water on my brush, making sure I get rid of that extra drop and soften the edges. Soften the edges. Maybe wash your brush and do it again. Do it again. If you want to do the same on this one, I'm going to paint another layer. So Immediately, I like more what's happening over there, or the water kind of the lines it makes. I'm 
making sure I gave enough paint so when I drop in water it doesn't just um, flow away and wash it out so I'm using water to soften the edge not too much but enough I can still see there's some water over here, so if I drop in water in paint, it will flow. I'm gonna leave it like that, I like it. I'm gonna add one more layer, but now I'm first gonna focus just on my little legs again i'm lifting it up so you can see it's fairly wet ish we want to be careful so i'm going to start with these legs is that's not touching anything i'm just going to make little twirly things again my hand is down so i can only use my fingers flick away from my body so I flick 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 it makes really when you flick you lift it up in the end and so it gets that skinny line doing the same on this side I'm painting towards me. I have too much water on this one, so now it just becomes a little bigger. And I'm gonna do a little line and flick and flick away from my body. then let me just do my little check it's a little wet on this side so i may start painting these legs little bit of paint only enough for your paintbrush to move i apologize for my dog barking And so by putting my hand down and using my paintbrush straight from the top, I can control my lines way better. Doing a check again, I can paint this one. <laughs> Making sure that it's wet to move, but you don't need it like you don't need a puddle of, of water. Making sure that it dry at the top. I know it was a little wet there. All good.
so I feel I have his um, little legs down so I'm gonna work on his head because this should be dry so I'm gonna go and make sure I fill it in as I go I don't want to outline it and let it dry gonna leave a little spot exactly like that one so I can do a highlight like over here making my cleaning my brush and use the outside to smudge it So now what's happening is the two look very close together, the top and the bottom section, and you wanna make sure that you can see there's a difference. So to make sure that you can still see that, I'm gonna leave a tiny, like a hair of line like that. And I'm gonna make this even darker like that and I want to make sure that I clean my brush take the water and blend it in you may have to clean your brush again depends on how much paint you have and soften the edge and then if you still feel you cannot see it you want you can even do it from this way Making a line. It's easier if you point your brush to that side. And then smudge it out. But now I have that hairline of light that you can see the two different sections. To get the the to fill in these colors i'm going to use black let's see if you can see when i'm going to mix it and some yellow to get this color and then i'm just gonna point my brush to those sides to the outside and maybe there's two little spots at the top and i'm gonna come back before it completely dries and soften the edges and pushing it the the paint kind of back towards the edge if you think yours is too light you cannot see it you can always go back and add another one and it will flow because it's a little wet And if you think there's too much water and it becomes one big mess and you cannot see the two different ones, clean your brush, touch your towel, and then just suck up the paint a little bit and push, push, push it to the edge. And I'm gonna let that dry before I add anything else. I'm gonna come back with the same color and fill in this spot on the top of his back. Pointing it. But then make sure that you blend it a little in.
and soften the edge a little bit more. So you can always go back and visit. Okay, so one more thing that I like to do is instead of adding black to my red to give it a little bit more dimension in my body, I'm gonna go ahead and use some purple. I'm gonna use a little bit of purple and I'm bringing it down to my, uh, I'm just gonna make a little part over there. Doesn't really matter. And so now I wanna come back and I just wanna add a few darker spots. I'm gonna squiggle, squiggle, kind of. Squiggle, squiggle, like that. And then come back and soften after I washed my brush and take that extra drop of water off. And I'm just gonna come back and add a little purple in my red orangey color to get a, some kind of darkness happening. I'm gonna do the same on the side. And soften the edge if it's too dark. And I want to do the same over here. So purple, red, mm, orangey. So you want to mix, um, instead of black, black sometimes makes everything just super dull. Um, you, It's nicer if you want to use a little bit of a purple that's a warm but still dark. So I want to just go ahead and add a few and I'm going to tap, tap, tap to blend them in. And I like that the water is actually giving me some texture. I like it like that. I may want to use one just like a little slight orange and if yours is not touching, mine is not touching, I'm just going to fold that in this line. Okay, not over blending it but just filling in some of it. Okay, so now I need to let this dry before I can add these black spots. But I can do this. It kind of looks like an upside down hard shape. Again, less water. You don't need any puddles. Just enough so your paintbrush can move. And you want to fill it in as you go without making an outline. making sure that you don't see any white spots that's touching the red. You can always come back with some red also and fill it in. And then you can still see your pencil lines. Pencil lines are easy to erase also after everything is dry. So fill in with black. Immediately, because you're, do, you're doing it on the red, it does have a really nice warm undertone. I'm just filling in the three black dots on each side. And for this one, I'm just going to make sure that I make a line. Yeah, I can even drag it down. Again, putting my hand down, I can 
I can uh, make sure the pressure I put down on my hand is really light. So only using my fingers. And I can outline it like that. And this is the cute little ladybug. You can totally see that it's too big and I need to cut, you know, out, erase my lines, it's fine. But this is the ladybug in watercolor. Pretty easy, pretty fun. Detailed, but not as detailed. I mean, it's not realistic by any means. So I wanna show my orange just as is. And then I wanna show my red. So, and then purple. But then if you do a little combination of those, um, and it depends on the, your ratio. This is my yellow that I used with my black in there. And then black. So these are the only colors that I used. Okay, so let's go to using gouache. 